This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're fortunate tonight to have as our guest a celebrity. Uh, everywhere I go, everybody wants to have their picture made with him, and every time I meet with him, he just everybody comes wants to hug his neck and get their picture made with him, put it on Facebook and everything. Coach Tommy Tuberville, the famous football coach and now the famous candidate for the United States Senate. And folks, we ain't got long to that primary. It's uh, right around the corner, March 3rd, and he is running for the Republican nomination for the United States Senate and has been transversing this state for about six, eight months with a young man from Montgomery named Paul Shashi, who's helping run his campaign. And uh, we're real proud to have Coach Tubbill on our show. He's a good conservative, good man, and uh, good to have you on the show, Coach. Thank you, Steve. Recruiting on steroids, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> you have been all over this state. Oh, I tell you, I've seen, I thought I'd seen the state, you know, travel it for 10, 11 years, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, I used to fly around and go see parents and go see high school football games and go see coaches and go into schools. But you'd fly in, do all that, get on the plane, fly back. Well, now I'm driving around my old truck, and uh, I tell you what, you see the the, the little small communities. I stop, to, I stop at the farmer's market. I always take some fresh tomatoes home if I get a chance. You know, it's, uh -huh. a, it's, it's been a lot of fun. You and your wife live in Auburn still? We live in Auburn. Uh -huh. We didn't sell much when we left. I've got a lake house and got a farm. I raised deer over in Tallahassee. Is that right? Y'all's house in Lake Martin? Y'all got a house yeah, in Lake Martin? Uh -huh. Yeah, but I high fenced 300 acres and and just raising deer for the fun of it. And, and Do I'd you show, shoot I'd, them I'd, afterwards? No, I can show you how to lose money. No, we, we, we just have fun with them. That's pretty much it. We we let some kids come in, and, you know, the uh -huh. uh, underprivileged kids come in and shoot some, shoot some deer, but you know, I just loved outdoors. I, my dad taught me to hunt and fish years ago, and I think that's what we're missing nowadays in some some ways, Steve. And a lot of these kids are staying on these video machines and they don't get out of the house. And remember, you, you mean you we used to find a ball outside and do something <laughs> with it. You know, growing up, we did something with uh, the ball. We showed it. I played football and baseball in my front yard. As soon as we got out of my little house in Troy where I grew up, uh, first thing in the morning, I remember that vividly. But now let me ask you, you got two boys yourself that you've yeah. raised uh, here in the state, and uh, yeah. they both are Auburn guys. Yeah, they, this is their home. You know, uh -huh. they, you know, we travel around some, but they always considered this their home. And and even though we left before they quite got a, out of high school, they both came back here to go to college. Tucker actually played for Gus at, at a backup quarterback position, and now he's in New York working in the financial district. He loves numbers, uh -huh. and then Troy. Uh, my youngest, he's 23, and he's on the five, six-year plan. Over How'd y'all name him Troy? Because uh, here we're on Troy University campus. Troy King's name for that. His parents went here. Yeah, and you I know? named I, we named Tucker after uh, our Tucker oldest. Tucker No, uh, yeah, after Tucker after Tucker uh, Fredrickson. But what I'm saying is, I wanted another T. So we're sitting around. My youngest, we didn't. We knew he was going to be a boy. We didn't know what to name it, and. Troy Aikman was doing good on TV and uh -huh. playing for the Cowboys, and so we named him Troy. That's Troy Aikman. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. For football. But you know what? Uh, talking about, I, I, that's how old I am. I think the best player ever played football for Auburn was Tucker Fredrickson. Now, you don't remember him because you didn't grow up watching him, but that son of a gun was the best offensive and defensive player in the SEC. Yeah, I've read a lot about him. Of course, All American. He, he was the first player yeah. drafted by the Giants, but exactly. he and he deserved it because he, he was as good as he was a 220 pound safety. Yeah, and he could run. He could. His, his daddy was a vet out of Hollywood, Florida. Yeah, and he was. A, but that son of a gun was the best athlete. He, he was the best offensive fullback and the best safety in on both sides of the ball. They played on both sides of the ball back then. That's back in the old days. Now, uh -huh. now they complain if they play half the plays on, on <laughs> offense or defense. They just don't want to play that much. But, man, back in those days, you had to be an Iron Man. And that's what they called him. Uh, Coach, tell us about – now, you grew up in rural Arkansas in the same neck of the woods. Tell, tell our viewers about your background and everything and coaching and, and, and uh, 
with old Bear Brunt was from down that area too. Yes, sir. Bear Brunt grew up about 20 miles from where I grew up in the Morro, Morro, Morro Bay, Bob. Morro Bay Bottom, uh -huh. right outside of Fort Ice. I had never heard anybody call it Morro Bay before. Well, you call it Morro Bottom, what he used to say. Yeah, it's called Morro Bay Bottom. Uh -huh. And actually, uh, when I first got out of college, I went over there and was a high school coach. That's where I first started coaching. At Morro High School? Well, it was Morro his hermitage, but uh -huh. it was right on the Morro Bay. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got into coaching because of guys like Bear Bryant and Suge Jordan and Frank Broyles and, uh -huh. and Vince uh, uh, Dooley, those, those guys, and they, they were my mentors. Real gentlemen, too, you know. They were. They really uh -huh. were. And matter of fact, I tried to get a, a job with Coach Bryant. When I first got out of college, I wanted to get a graduate assistantship, and I wrote him a letter, and I still got the letter that wrote back, said that, it, you know, he, he understood, you know, I was from close to his hometown and where I grew up and spent a lot of time in Camden where I grew up. And he said, but he, right at the moment, he was taking kids that played for him that wanted to stay in coaching. And so it didn't work out. But, uh, no, I, there's a, you know, not too far, Barry Switzer, you know, was from Crossett, Arkansas. Ken Hatfield uh -huh. was from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, a lot of coaches come from that area. And for some reason, you know, uh, uh, you know, I got into it in terms of just wanting to be a college coach. I, you know, I never thought much about pro professional football. I wanted to be a college football coach because of my heroes were, you know, the guys that were, you know, in that area that, that did the same thing. And your daddy, he, he was a military man. He didn't really want you being coaching, did he? Well, you know, I didn't start playing football till the seventh grade because we didn't have football around our area. Uh -huh. uh, around you know, Camden? Around uh -huh. Camden. Uh -huh. We just didn't have it. I mean, and, and so uh, he was a military guy. He, at age 16, he, he quit school, 10th grade, and joined the Army and ended up driving a tank all the way across Europe after landed at Omaha Beach, uh -huh. Normandy. And uh, he was a military guy, died on active duty at 53. But, uh, you know, he wanted me to do something he felt like I could obtain. And I told him one day, he said, Dad, I want to be a college football coach. You know, he said, you know, he said, that's for people that, you know, have made All-American, done those things, you know, the notoriety. And, uh, but, you know, that's what this country gives you. Steve gives you the opportunity. If you want it, you go get it. I don't care none who you those, are. But no, I know, but none of those coaches were great football players. No, exactly. Hatfield and all them, they were, uh, Switzer, they were, well, Switzer wasn't a great football player, was he? Was a, he was a pretty average player. Uh -huh. Hatfield was a, an all-conference player. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, – if and if you just look at the coaches now, most of them are, aren't, aren't – you know, Steve Spurrier was a Heisman Trophy winner. He's Dabo all, was a walk-on. Yeah. He's the only true. Uh -huh. Steve was the only true one that I ever knew that was a that was a great football uh -huh. player, and also become a great great coach. Dabo's son, I think, holds or something up at Clemson that holds yeah. the kicks or something like that. You know, it's guys like Dabo and me that just said, "Let's, you know, if work ethic can do it, we're, we're going to get it done." Uh -huh. And uh, I was like Dabo. I was a very average football player, but I knew what I wanted to do. You know, when you come out of college, probably ninety percent of the kids that I've ever coached had no clue what they wanted to do, you know, as a job. They thought they were all going to be professional football players, and very few of them are. Yeah. And so uh, I knew what I wanted to do when I went to college. I knew I wanted to be a, a football coach. I wanted to be a college football coach, and nothing was going to stop me. And I worked. Now, I worked about eight, ten years and didn't hardly make a dime, you know, working my way up. High school football. High mm -hmm. school and then being a graduate assistant, you don't uh, make any money. No, no, no. You know, you just go to school and you, you do all the all the – stuff that the assistants don't want to do it's 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 time consuming and most a lot of my buddies said man you're lucky to be a head coach at a sec school i said wait a minute you wanted to work at the paper mill i went to school to do this uh -huh. and then i trained for 10 years you know it, it this ain't luck this is just putting nose to the grindstone what was your first head football coach John? hermitage high school but i mean the college ranks uh uh Ole miss Ole miss 1995 uh -huh. 24 years ago and uh, -huh. uh had a great time. Went and got to know Johnny Vault very well, and you know he was another one of my. He heroes. was still hanging in there. He was you? still hanging in was there. Was he AD or something? No, he was. Uh, he was just retired. Uh -huh. He'd come watch practice. Would he come? Uh -huh. Yeah, and and then passed away while I was there. Uh -huh. uh, he, I guess Coach Vault was somewhere in his close to nineties, but he told me he said, "Now you stay stay somewhere long enough, you're gonna get fired." He says, "I I'll, I won national championships here at Ole Miss. I stayed too long and got fired." They fired Vault. Well, well, at first he retired, uh -huh. and then he came back, and then he got fired. Yeah, 
And, and legend, and the stadium's name for him, Vault Hemingway Vault Stadium. Vault Hemingway Stadium. Uh -huh. Yeah, legend. Really, uh -huh. He really, really was. was. I remember Johnny, uh, Coach Vault and Bryant and all them in that era. Suge Jordan. You know, Suge Jordan was such a gentleman. Yeah. Well, they all were back in those I days. I know it. You know, my mentor and and really at the at the end of the day was were all those guys that uh, you know th that you know wore hats on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Tom Landry, you know, wore the hat. Oh, yeah. and Cowboys and tie and, and uh, most of them did wear ties. Did you come then. to Auburn after Ole Miss? I did. I left. I was at uh, Ole Miss for four years. Uh -huh. and, and then uh, who was your best players at Ole Miss? You think? Oh, I had Deuce McAllister. Uh, played for the Saints. Uh -huh. uh, Terrence Metcalf. We actually left a real good football team. Did you recruit all those guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it, the head coach gets, gets a lot of the, a lot of the blame and a lot of the glory. But uh -huh. it's, Steve, it's really your assistants. They do the job. That's right. I mean, they do all the work, and I, you just organize it. I, I'm convinced right now that that some assistants in this country are making a difference, and I think Kevin Steele makes a difference in Auburn's program right now. Oh, and no I doubt. think the Clemson defensive coordinator is the reason they, they beat Alabama last year. I think the, yeah. the Clemson defensive coordinator was so s smart that he just outmaneuvered uh, Alabama defensively. Well, it's it, and it's but it's 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 not easy, but it's a lot easier when you got those players. That's uh, true. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that, there's some great football players in the SEC, and Clemson's had them. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and and just watch these kids grow up. This year, Auburn is they don't get any better than the defense that Kevin Skills got it at right. Auburn. Uh, no, they don't get any uh -uh. better. You know, the defensive linemen, the linebackers that uh -huh. can run, the defensive backs. You know, right now, just Auburn just can't get an offense to go along with it. Yeah. You know, consistently, they're pretty good. Got a young quarterback. Uh -huh. He's got a bright future. But first year, 18 year old quarterbacks in the SEC, yeah. you know, they don't do very well. Coach, uh, how many years were you at Auburn? You came home to Auburn. Yeah, 10 years. Uh -huh. uh, 10, 11 years, 11 years. Uh, and then I went to old, uh, Texas Tech after that for three years. Uh -huh. Met some nice people. Uh, uh, Bobby Knight lived right down the street from me. Uh, got to know Boone Pickens very well. You know, that that's a different part of the world out there. West Texas uh -huh. is like, uh, it's like nothing you've ever been to. It, you know, the great Americans, but it's all farmland. It's flat. Uh, as far as you can see, uh, it's, uh, you know, they, they have an ocean of water out there under the ground. You know, it's very dry. Uh -huh. But they have five million acres of cotton. And I asked when I got out there, five million acres of cotton, and it only rains like an inch or two a year. He said, we, we irrigate everything because we got an ocean of water underneath the ground. Uh -huh. Boone Pickens told me one time, he said, Coach, I've made a lot of money in my life. I've made a lot of money in oil and a lot of money in gas. But the most of the money I ever made off of is I bought water rights. He said, uh, I sell water to Dallas, Fort Worth. I pump it to them. Is that right? Yeah, and it, and it's amazing. Uh huh. Uh, you know these bigger cities. You think about it. Bigger cities are getting. Where are they going to get their water from? I mean, millions and millions. Of Atlanta. They're struggling for water supply. Well, everybody is. Uh -huh. You know, there's just their distribution of water uh -huh. across the country, and, and there's got to be a huge plan for that in the future. Coach, uh, back to Auburn. Uh, who you, who you think your best players ever came out of Auburn? Oh, you know, there was a lot of good ones. You know, that 2004 team I had, Carnell Williams. And, oh, yeah. And uh, Ronnie Brown and Jason Campbell and Carlos Rogers. Four first-round picks. Now, four in the first round, if you got one in a four- or five-year period, you're lucky. And that year we had four in, uh -huh. on the same team. Did you team. recruit those guys? Yeah, I recruited every one of them. Great uh -huh. kids. I, and every, I, I made National Coach of the Year seven. I got seven awards that year, National Coach of the Year. That was the easiest team I've ever coached because they coached talented. themselves. Because they were talented too. Talented, but they were leaders. Uh huh. You know, you you can have all the talent you want, but if if you don't have leaders in that dressing room, I don't care if you're in there, they're gonna listen to you to a certain point, but they dang sure gonna listen to those great players that are gonna stand up and point a finger in an offensive lineman's face that's not working hard enough in practice and say, hey. You're going to do better in practice uh -huh. tomorrow. You didn't practice very well. Now, they'll listen to that a whole lot better than they will a coach. And so, it, you know, that, that's what athletics is about, Steve. You know, I'd hate to see this country if we didn't have it. That's what we have in this country that other countries don't have is we have organized sports and athletics that teach these kids leadership and, and work ethic and how to play together as a team. Uh -huh. and, it, and we endear that as, as, a, as a country. And 
that's what I think gives us a huge edge because our education is not great. You know, we're 37th in the country in education all over the world, 37th. Now, would you ever believe that? That's amazing to me. And so, uh, but we still got the, the leadership in this country, and a lot of it comes from kids growing up in sports. Mm -hmm. Coach, let's get back to the Senate race. When did you decide to run for the Senate? And uh, when did you announce and everything? I've forgotten. You've been campaigning for six or eight months now, haven't you? Yeah, going on eight months. Well, here's what happened, Steve. About 10, 12 years ago, I told my wife, you know, when I, when I retire, I want to do something. I want to help. I want to give back. I was never in the military. My dad was a military uh, uh, guy, died in the active duty in the military, and I said, I want to give back. So when I retired, I looked into the situation of possibly running for governor. Uh, then I kind of squelched that out. And then I, I looked at the situation we have here as a, as a, in the U.S. Senate. We have one Republican, and we should have two. That's why we should. And so mm -hmm. uh, I started just talking to people about it, going around talking to people in politics, and, hey, what do you think? Uh, you think I'd have a shot? It wasn't something that I just jumped into. And then uh, I got some encouragement from people in the Senate. Coach, you know, you're exactly what we need. You, you, you've had a job. You understand one of the biggest problems that we're having in this country is education. Uh, it's you know, and it's bringing this country down, and so I kept looking, praying about it. Me and my wife thought about it because we know how how uh, cruel it gets at times. <laughs> but uh, so last April, I guess 16th or 17th, I said, you know, uh, I'd be the best guy for the job. Now I wouldn't do this just to be doing it. No. Uh, I, I don't I don't need a job, but we're this country's in trouble, and we got a lot of tough decisions to make. And it's not for people that want to go up there and just get reelected. I think people are going to have to go up there and sacrifice things just to get things done to make this country better. And so I want to go up and make some hard decisions. I'm a Donald Trump guy. Uh, I'm behind him 100%. I think he's made decisions on the business level that's made us a very, very strong nation at a time when most people across this world are burning. You know, their economies are yeah. bad. And, and so, uh, you know, I want to go help. I know, you know, I'm, again, I don't need the job. The money that I make is going to go, I'm going to donate it to the veterans of Alabama. Uh, I, I truly believe that this should be a voluntary job in terms of go do your job, get your expenses paid, and then go home. Mm -hmm. I don't think this, to me, this uh, a job uh, of, of this nature should be one that you go be a voice for the people of your state, and then after you've done that and, and spoke your voice, Go back home, get you a job again, you know, and kind of understand what's going on out in the community. Mm -hmm. Well, you've enjoyed getting out and meeting everybody, hadn't you? You know, you're sort of enjoying this, aren't you? I, I'm, I could tell. Well, that's what I met with you that you were enjoying campaigning. I'm a people person, and in my wife, after about you four, stay in people's houses too, ain't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I go and stay with people's homes. I've slept in a couple of truck stops. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, you know, my two boys are gone. My wife, she's got her friends and. And, you know, we, we do a lot of stuff together. Uh -huh. But, you know, I, when, when we talked and prayed about this, she goes, you know, why don't you go do this? But if you're going to do it, you go do it right. Don't you come home till you win. And I'm pretty much gone every day. She comes and goes to, you know, some events with me. But uh, I just like people. I, I, I like like sitting there talking to you. But I like to listen as much as I like to talk. I like to listen to what – I like to listen to stories about, uh -huh. you know, Hackleberg – Alabama, and you know, I've been to the Coon Dog Cemetery up around Russellville, and and uh, the see my columns in all those rural papers in the state, and I get a copy of them, so I know I follow you around, <laughs> and I I tell people I said he's he's around, I can tell because I'm I'm in sixty papers, my columns in sixty papers throughout the state, and I'm the only political writer in almost all those papers, and uh, and people read their local paper. And I tell people when they get ready to run for office, they'll come up somebody ask my advice, especially a smaller office, not the U.S. Senate so much, but uh, I say, y'all need to go see those local papers and sit, get out in the rural areas because people appreciate you coming to, to their town. They want to see you. Exactly. You know, and, and I've seen you in Hackleburg. I've seen you in Russellville. I've seen you all over the state because I was in Jasper not long ago, and they liked you were the first one they had on that podcast at the Mountain Eagle. Yeah. At the Jasper Mountain Eagle. and uh, So you're getting around better than any of them are. I, I'm going to tell you that right now. 
you know, if you're going to be the voice for somebody, you need to know who they are. You're not going to be able to meet everybody. But, you know, I go to the courthouses. I go by mm -hmm. the fire department, the police department, the sheriff's office, the schools, if you have time. But as you said, you, you know, I've been very encouraged by going by some of these small town newspapers. They're still kicking. You know, a lot no, of them. They're prospering because people are going to read their local paper. Exactly. And, and, you know, they might not be an everyday paper. Uh -huh. I, have, I don't know. Do you think, is there any everyday paper? Most there are about 10 of them I'm in. Tuscaloosa is, Dothan is, uh, Opelika, Auburn uh, News, um, Coleman, Scottsboro, places. Yeah. Be surprised. You know the people in the state, really the population in North Alabama. So you'd be surprised some of those papers up there, Fort Payne, it's got a daily paper, uh, Coleman Times. Uh, you know, whereas counties down here in this part of the state uh, may have 25, 30,000 people in those counties got 100,000 people in them. So if you're in the Scottsboro Daily Sentinel, it ain't just people in Scottsboro, that's people all over that county, that Jackson County area and DeKalb County. By the way, that's the prettiest part of Alabama. If I were you in Shashi, I'd schedule <laughs> my time to be up there in the fall. In Gunnersville. That, that Marshall, DeKalb, Jackson County area is the best kept secret of the state. It's starting to get a lot of uh, tourism now, but in the fall of the year, Coach, that, I know y'all, I've ridden those roads. I make, if I'm gonna travel in the state, I schedule you to make a speech or something up in that part of the state in the fall. That's like going to, the, Asheville, North Carolina ain't got a thing on that area. No. It, it is beautiful. This is the most beautiful state in the yeah, country. Yeah, you think of everything that we have here. You know, you've got the lakes up there, mm -hmm. and then you go to the Shoals area over there with the river, uh -huh. and then you go down to the coast, and you got the ports, and then you go to the Wiregrass, which is totally different. Totally different. And, it, and then you, you've got the mountainous areas, you know, that really starts around Birmingham, uh -huh. going north, and it, okay. it is. It, Hit them around Gaston. It, uh -huh. it is so different. Uh, across different parts of the state, and I don't pe think people really understand what we have in this state because some people haven't seen it all. Well, you got the Gulf Coast, you know, obviously, uh, Ball and Mobile, that Gulf Coast. But I mean, have you been there lately? I I've it been is really boom. growing. I know. Oh. Ball and Canada, fast growing county state. And you know, the the port is a diamond in the rough. You know, Mobile area they supply close to 30% of the state's GDP every year just because of the port area. And mm -hmm. now they're dredging it out where they can get bigger ships in because right now they have to unload those container cars five miles out mm -hmm. because those big ships are, are, you know, hit bottom. And so they're digging it out. Uh, you know, of course, they want to put the bridge across down there and then eventually open all the port mm -hmm. uh, because right now the tunnel blocks these big ships from going past the tunnel. But uh, opening that up, uh, over the years is going to be a huge uh, uh, profit maker for it the is. state. Coach and your wives know that because I was sitting there, uh, I had lunch with Joe Bonner and Governor Ivey. Now, I got I wasn't in the meeting, but we, Joe Bonner, that here chief of staff, was former congressman from that area. And we were talking about they worked hard to pass that rebuild Alabama last year, and I was for it. I think it's the best thing the state has done in a while because you've got to keep your roads and infrastructure. But one of the things in that package was to was to give the port some more money. People realize that's a whole Alabama port, and uh, we, every state hadn't got a port. But what brought attention to that to me is I've got I've been friends with Senator Shelby for a long time, and we were having dinner one night. It's been three or four years ago in Birmingham, and, and uh, he looked at me and said, "I'm fixing to do something about that Mobile port." And, and you'll be a part of this working with him hand in glove when you get up there. He told me, and this resonated with me, he says, you know, we can't ship our Mercedes vehicles through that port. And that just, that to me was the whole story about how important that was. They were having to transport the Mercedes and Hyundai and all the cars made in Alabama over to Savannah and our own, we got our own port. So he's getting a lot of federal money for that thing, along with the rebuild of Alabama. You'll be part of that and work with him on that uh, when you well, get up Well, thousands of other, not just Mercedes now. All these other cars are the same way. I thousands of cars. Exactly. They have to put them on either a train or trucks and go all the way to Savannah. And by doing what they're doing, Senator Shelby, giving the money to have that, uh -huh. have, have it dredged out, is going to bring 
not millions, but billions of dollars into this state over, over a number of years. Well, all those guys in North Alabama, but they became the biggest advocates for it. Uh, Senator Clay Schofield up in, up in Sand Mountain and Livingston over in, in Jackson and especially Greg Reed and Jasper, they became the biggest advocates because they said the coal from uh, Walker County and Jasper, all the poultry from Sand Mountain uh, for Schofield and them, and then Livingston had the same thing. They, they were brought more than Mobile Baller Centers were yeah. because of that reason. But you're wise to know that port is, is an important thing. And we have now become the second largest, and our, when this Toyota Mazda thing in Huntsville is, 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 it comes to fruition, it's going to be, our mom's going to be the number one in the country in automobile manufacturing. And we're, and we're talking about bringing in more tax dollars. Yeah. Well, there's the answer. Exactly. There's your answer. You, you've got plenty, plenty of water. I mean, exactly. And, and, the, and, the pro, and the good thing for our area is that it is so shallow to get in to New Orleans ports uh -huh. and over that area. So if, if we will, and we will do it right down there, it will open up a whole new area of, of manufacturing. It's like this ULA up in uh, Decatur. You know, they make, they're making the new big rockets now for the future Mars trips, and they have to ship those things down the rivers, you know, on barges. Well, where do you think it's going to go? You know, so uh, it's, there's a lot of possibilities. You just got to take advantage of it. But the problem is, Steve, it, it has, it's, it's like building a football team. You got to think 10 years down the road, and for some reason we haven't been doing that. Uh -huh. We got to think down the road about the possibilities of everything that we've got. You know, Huntsville is booming. It's the best in the country. But car, the car business, it can only go so far, simply for the fact if you got to send them that far over to have them shipped out, you know, the profit margin is going to go down on you. Yeah. So that's really going to help. And Senator Shelby's been on top of that, as you said. You and he. He's been thinking about it, what did yeah. you say, three or four years ago. Oh, so yeah. he's the guy that, you know, uh -huh. is going to bring it to fruition. Well, Coach, our time's up. I hate it. Well, I'll maybe have it back on for the primary, but uh, this has been a fun show, and I would thank our viewers for watching, too. Who's going to win the Iron Bowl, Steve? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I, I, <laughs> uh, 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 Alabama's behind the eight ball with their quarterback. Hurt. Oh, I'm telling you. What uh, a tough deal that yeah. is. But you know how Iron Bowls are. Anybody can win. I don't care who the favorite is. That's a knockdown drag out. It sure is. Well, folks, our guest tonight has been uh, uh, leading the candidate for the U.S. Senate, to Coach Tommy Tuberville, uh, former Auburn football coach. We thank Coach Tuberville for being with us, and we thank you viewers for watching. Hope you tune in again next week for Alabama Politics. Thank you.